Welcome back to another episode of Vaguely Adults. Uh, you got one of your hosts, Serana, and you got Shirley. And for the first time, we're introducing guests. So please say hello Where? to <laughs> Charlie. Oh, uh, hello. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Charlie. I'm uh, one of Sar's friends. <laughs> Yay. We're, we're friends? Oh. I mean, if we're not, should I oh. not say that? Are we not friends? Don't do this to me. <laughs> You're making them freak out. Stop. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, we have a very special episode today because we have our first guest ever. And because Charlie's the only person that I know that's still in school, um, we wanted to take a trip down memory lane and discuss school. Go figure. Um, so how is school? On a scale of one to school, how would you rate it? It's very school, I'll give it that. <laughs> but we do have very different school systems. So can you just give us like a little rundown of what your school life has been like? And then we'll compare to Shirley and I's. Because even though we live in the same country, we went to different schools. So we'll, we'll dive into that a little later. Ugh. And now I've got to have a memory. Years one to that point, six is primary school, which I want to say is your grade two to seven, but I might be making that up. You are definitely making that up, friend. We're just gonna not yeah, do well, equivalent. <laughs> fair. I have a vague memory or idea of it, but it's kindergarten to fifth grade is what you're thinking of. Yeah, that'll be it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's like from ages three Five. to four to... Girl, how old oh. were you in kindergarten? <laughs> it's definitely like ages five through ten I or mean, eleven. I'm on the younger side because I have a late birthday in the year. So why? Your birthday's not late. <laughs> it's in August. That's, that's like more than midway through the year, dude. Okay, but like my friends were one and I was still like only 75% of living, you know? All my friends are older than me technically by one year, even though we we're born in the same year. That was me growing up until I became friends with a group of children. We're Whatever. a year apart. Anyways, Charlie, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's primary school, which was bundle of laughs. Uh, <laughs> that's basically it. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember my younger years, so it's all a blur. Memory loss from stress and being young. And then uh, years seven to nine is technically pre-GCSE, but still secondary school. Where it's sort so, of a, here's some knowledge. <laughs> Take it, I guess. I'm a middle school. But when you guys are in school, it's like kind of set tracks so you're like in a specific uh, study orientated to what you would be studying in form six or upper levels question mark form six all right that's a trinidadian thing there's like a lower six yeah. and a uh, uh oh six four. Four six same difference i think <laughs> yeah basically probably i hope unless this is gonna yeah, get it's, confusing it's not university it's like before university yeah six form yeah there we go um, but yeah, we don't really have that. We kind of just have general, you go to school, here's all this general knowledge from yeah. like elementary to high school, almost. Not almost, and then they exactly. Tell you you got to figure out what you're doing with your life. But you, you're not there yet. Well, well, it's actually. sort of streamlined with GCSEs. You drop a few subjects, but then you, I think you have to take eight or nine GCSEs and then A-levels, which is sixth form, you do, uh three or four so it's sort of just thunk bottleneck with the sound effect of course <laughs> the sound effects are important i think maybe the equivalent for us would be regents exams or like our state examinations but not necessarily because those are still just general exams to make sure that what we learned in that entire year was retained, basically. And it's not even that entire year, if you think about it, because, like, you take English, like, your junior year, so it's, like, what you retained in the last three years of high school, and the... I didn't pay attention to the sciences, I'm gonna be honest with you. Kind of wish I had paid attention in school a little bit more, pay attention in class, kids. But, um, yeah, I don't know. But, like, even New York is different, because New York has regents, but other states don't. And, like... Oh. Yeah. 
And even then, that's why they were like, if you go for like an advanced regents diploma, it's kind of useless if you're going to college, not in New York. (laughs) But also college and university, different things across the pond. College is the years right before university. But yeah, college for us, is technically sixth form, and then uni is the whole. It's an interchangeable term in the Americas. Even though yeah. I honest, I th- I think the only difference is like university technically, like when we're talking like here in America, it just means it has like multiple campuses question mark or a lot of buildings versus like a college is smaller question mark. I don't know. We we had multiple buildings. But we yeah, were but still a college. But because we were really. small, I think it's like population and campuses but again those words mean nothing to me because we also had dorms which were like 30 blocks away so yeah. so which our university experience right our university was on lower manhattan so like in the 20th streets regions but our dormitories were like on the upper something. east side yeah it was closer on to like, like the 90th College. street or like a yeah. hundred and something plus streets So if you're here for classes and you had to go back to your dorm, you literally go to the top of Manhattan. (laughs) You have to, like, take public transportation to get there. It makes no sense. Sounds like nothing but fun. It makes no sense because there's a university on the upper part of Manhattan that has their dormitories, like, three avenues away from where our university was. You would think, oh, maybe we could just... And they're part of the same like conglomerate like the cunies yeah so so what we went to was a city university network and within that network there's a whole bunch of different universities at different levels so they have obviously different requirements and stuff like that but it's not about us it's about you charlie i knew that gcses were coming up and then well the pandemic happened and then life happened what is it like having the anxiety to have to prepare for those exams and then it being like oh actually we're not gonna do it right now because uh the state of the world it's terrible basically in the simplest way imagine because there's the thing of oh you're not gonna do your exams but maybe you will but also we're not gonna have your teachers mark everything by the work you've already done because that would be incorrect uh so how's it gonna get marked (laughs) So you're like in this huge limbo. Yeah, and most schools haven't done mocks because they're after in 2021 and no one's been in physical school since then and it's ridiculously easy to cheat doing it at home. Not that I'd... No. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just... We can't do mocks, so we don't have predicted grades from that. We can't have our work from the last year and a bit w- marked because it doesn't count. And we don't have exams because you know the big covid (laughs) but we might have exams because we're still registered for them and sort of there's this whole what other route are you gonna get your stuff marked or assessed (laughs) yeah it really sounds like a headache and a half and it's hilarious that almost no education system that i've seen has it together because at least what i heard in the states like they either reduced the um, score brackets that they're looking at for certain universities or they're just not looking at exam scores. They would just take like high school transcripts or high school grades and apply it. But it's only certain universities and certain colleges. So fact check me on that because I, (laughs) who knows if I'm speaking the truth. That's what's wild though. It's like every university has changed their requirements, but some to more degrees than others. So like when I was looking at grad school, for example, um, past like four years that we already have, some schools were requiring um, the GRE Mm. and some were not because they were like it kind of makes no sense with everything happening like we don't it's fine like we'll just take your your transcripts whereas other universities like other grad programs were like oh we still want the GRE but we're not going to take it into as much account if your grades are like good enough basically so it's like a big gray area and like depending on what universities you're looking at all the requirements are different and it's the same for my sister because she is about to finish her associates and so she is looking at four years and the requirements are kind of like shifting and some are staying like where they are and so she's kind of like 
lost in the sauce about what to do and where to apply to right now. It's also interesting to see how there was such just this radical shift into online learning, even though yeah. online learning has been available for a long time. Like I personally, I took more online classes during my university career than well ever because it was never offered to me mm -hmm. elsewhere. And I thought it was fantastic. But how is it being forced to only have online classes? And how does that dynamic change? Because you can't really socialize with your peers. And yeah. I feel like now, for you at least, Charlie, it's a very important part of your developmental life to have that sort of social interaction. It's sort of... We don't have much time to talk in lessons, but we get breaks. And we're still uh, the people I care to talk about i can talk with elsewhere but i changed schools too two years ago uh so i'm in a different secondary school now but i'm planning on going back to my old secondary school for sixth form but i don't really talk to anyone in my class other than a sort of passing comment of like what you've just said is completely wrong my guy <laughs> or something like that uh because i know i'm gonna leave soon and yeah. i already have mates so I don't want to spend too much time away from studying and important stuff like that, making friends with people I'm probably not going to talk with much after I leave. I mean, fair enough, yeah. I also didn't have many friends, but like the friends that I did have, they're kind of the same ones that lingered. <laughs> it's like the same five people that I talk to now. Um, in... In high school, I, I had a lot of friends, I actually can't relate there. I was never not with someone, um, but college... Some of us are lonely, Shirley. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I, I apparently learned recently that I'm an extrovert. So, um, it's information to me, it's news to me, but here we are. I'm apparently an extrovert, hi. And so, in high school and middle school and elementary school, I had a lot of friends. It wasn't until I got to university that I realized that I was like oh I don't go to school with any of the people that I know and I had a much harder time making friends but that's because like everyone was kind of lost in their own thing like everyone was trying to figure out their own paths like we're all at university half of the people that I was in school with were like yeah I'm like totally gonna do finance and accounting bro like that's yeah where I'm going in life so like those are not exactly people I wanted to mingle with because they were all the same kind of person not to say there's anything wrong with studying finance or accounting but it, it takes a certain kind of person most of the time um to go into that anyway um <laughs> Then it was about, like, not knowing how to interact with people. Because we were in class, but it's not like you don't do group projects like you do in high school. It's not the same people you're seeing in every class. I went to very small middle school, a tiny high school. Our graduating class was, like, 70 students. Um, so, like, being in university and suddenly, like, every class was a new set of people, it was kind of weird. So like making friends was interesting. And then really you become friends with one person who leads you to another person who leads you to another person. And that's that's making friends in university. It's like you just have to latch on to one person and network opens. But the other big thing about university is that you all hate the classes that you start off Absolutely. in. Absolutely. So your bond is basically like, why do I need to take this introduction to finance class? And then fast forward like, five years later and you're sat watching GameStop take over the stock market and you're like, maybe I should have paid attention in my finance class five years Absolutely. ago. But it's maybe. also like, once you get into like a niche, like everyone gets into like some niche study in like university. Like once you find your niche, it becomes easier because you start seeing the same people taking the same kind of classes. Like I took every psychology class that my school had to offer every single one it should not i should not have been able to do that there should have been more offered but whatever um and so i saw the same people because we were all doing that we were all taking we're all studying psychology for the most part most of us were also taking all the sociology classes so we saw each other a lot and then you, obviously you had your like finance and accounting bros who took psychology because they thought it was going to be an easy course and then when they were writing all the papers they're complaining like i don't understand why is there so much work why am i reading so much like that this is the class you signed up for my dude like yeah it's the nature of the classes but speaking of university charlie have you been thinking about that and to like pivot i know that you are an artiste 
Um, are you thinking about maybe exploring that as an opportunity? This is not supposed to be an interview, but that's pretty much what it feels <laughs> like, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on that? Because I know now it's just, compared to what we had, there's now a lot more opportunities in creative fields, and we're not that old, but to see the passage of time and how quickly things can change and the new opportunities and the new classes and courses, like, there are meme courses that you can get grades for. But anyways, yes, do you uh, have any interest in pursuing that? I was never able to finish uh, an art piece in all three uh, years I did art in school. Uh, each year we'd have an end of year piece that was supposed to be sort of wow this is all you've learned over the year i never completed one so I, I don't think i have any chance of getting into one never mind if i have an interest well i mean you you do have a portfolio like with all your digital art and stuff like that too maybe it's not a school in the uk maybe a different country shrug shoulders <laughs> i mean i want to learn how to actually draw stuff like anatomy wise so yeah it's also i feel like when you even if you enjoy a subject or like you do art i don't know what kind of art you do but like sometimes when you enjoy something and then you're forced to do it for a grade it kind of takes away all the value and like why you like doing it because it becomes a chore it's the same way that people who make their hobbies into their jobs kind of start hating it because now i'm not doing it for like the intrinsic feeling of I love doing it and that could be it um that mm. was my sister also she is also an artist um all kinds she's exploring like digital art right now and when she tried to get into it like as a career she absolutely hated it hated doing it and then she just got into something else and just took classes for fun to learn techniques and she freaking loved it and she does it more and more often now because it's not something that she feels obligated to do, but rather something she wants to do because she's bored or because she saw someone do a painting and she was like, whoa, like, I want to do that. I could do that. There's that. The modern art approach. <laughs> You're not limited to anything. You're literally so young. Like, you have so much time to explore and, like, just dabble on the side. But Absolutely. Hustle, know, girl. We're going to be hustle. here to, like, hype you up and watch you grow and it's gonna be great we've like adopted you basically <laughs> oh absolutely i'm honored you are my protege so <laughs> you know there's that i just wanted to say thank you for being our first guest ever um, I'm and i hope that you had a great time because to be honest i'm just very happy that i'm not in school anymore <laughs> <laughs> because i don't know if i would have been able to handle the stress and anxiety and a pandemic i barely am to be honest i mean that's fair that is incredibly fair if there's anything you want to tell all three of our viewers which one of them is you hello uh, <laughs> promote anything that you want to promote uh, gay and trans rights that's all i can think of amazing amazing well again thank you for being our first guest i hope you had a lovely time i know i did i don't know if really did but um, I always have a lovely time. All of Charlie's stuff will be linked in the description. You can go check out their art. It'll be a great time. Uh, you can catch us on multiple platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can also rate us because that really helps people to actually discover us and not just have three people listening, which we adore. Don't worry. Yeah, I hope you're staying safe, healthy, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, friends. Goodbye. I'm it's honored just... you used my photograph and I didn't even say that in the thing so I put my ego in check <laughs> I also Truly. did not mention Dreamcatcher once was just, that's, that's that's weird yeah we were doing a professional are. thing you know what you should do you should just like film something real quick right now like like a little bonus after the ending like almost forgot to say Dreamcatcher and just end it <laughs> I'll put that as well. But I forgot to mention, I did buy five Dreamcatcher albums and then I paid way too much money in shipping. So That sounds yeah. like you. That is very on brand. Yeah, still a scam. Boo, capitalism. Yeah. <laughs>